Hi everyone, Meg's here. I am the creator of the Wheel Life blog, a blog devoted to living your best life with a physical disability. I talk all things disability, health and fitness, mindset, productivity, and organization. In today's video, I am going to be talking about um, kind of two things. The first thing is bladder health. Um, how it's different after a life of with spinal cord injury, how to take care of it and how to prevent urinary tract infections. And then I am going to show you the three different types of catheters that I personally use on a daily, weekly basis and in the different situations in which I use them. And I'll talk about more with that later. So first, bladder health. So having a spinal cord injury includes more than just not being able to walk. And if you're living with a spinal cord injury, you definitely know what I'm talking about. One other side effect of a spinal cord injury results in retention or incomplete emptying of the bladder. And that increases the risk of urinary tract infections or UTIs and incontinence. And while some people with spinal cord injuries will regain bladder control at some point after their injury, the majority of us will have to learn how to use um, an intermittent cath or catheter or uh, some other bladder type of bladder management that works for that, for that specific person. It could be like a Foley catheter or having a surgery to have a suprapubic catheter or metrophenoff or things like that. Um, so while we as spinal cord injuries will always have some bacteria in our bladders from self-cathing, we can do things to maintain bladder health and urinary tract infections or UTIs. And that bacteria in our bladder comes from not being able to empty correctly or just introducing the catheter with bacteria on it from the outside world into your bladder multiple times a day. Um, but poor bladder management is actually the leading cause of all rehospitalizations with spinal cord injuries and a full bladder, just having a full bladder is actually the leading cause of autonomic dysreflexia. And if you don't know what that is, I can explain it into, in a future video. But I do have five tips um, for, bla for maintaining bladder health. And that's what I am sharing with you today. Um, the number one tip is just to halt the spread of bacteria. Um, while we will, like I just said, before, we will always have some type of black t bacteria in our bladder because of the nature of our injuries or disabilities or whatever you want to call it. Um, but using proper hygiene beforehand, like washing your hands, using clean and new supplies, um, doing what you can to not introduce as much bacteria into your bladder as you can um, is one of the best ways of halting the spread of bacteria. And another way of doing that is to keep the skin clean. So you want to practice good hygiene all around, um, especially when you are about to self calf. So that's gloves, washing your hands, washing your skin, um, all of that stuff. Tip number two is proper nutrition. Food can be fuel or it can be um, your sickness. It can drive well-being or it can drive chronic pain and sickness. Um, maintaining a healthy weight will help um, keep your body functioning the best that it can. And I have found that my incontinence has been better since starting my healthy journey and losing weight and 
getting the right nutrients and everything like that. Um, and kind of going along with that is tip number three, and that's maintaining an active lifestyle. Staying active and doing some type of movement or daily exercise um, will also help keep your body functioning the best that it can. Um, and it helps keep the insides moving through all the systems as well. So it doesn't have to be a heavy lift every day. It could be yoga, it could be a walk, it could be um, something on a cardio, excuse me, something on a cardio machine, um, just stretching, any type of movement will help contribute to your bladder health. Tip number four um, is keeping up your routine of bladder management and that will help keep the bacteria flushed out. So the longer the bacteria sits in your bladder, the worse the infection can get. The more that it can spread, the greater the symptoms, the more severe the infection can get. Um, and kind of keeping up with that is my last but probably most important tip in bladder health and that is to stay hydrated. Drink your water. 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 I'm going to say that again. Drink water. <laughs> Drinking enough water will help um, wash out all the bacteria and it'll help um, keep it moving and other waste moving throughout all of the systems. Um, and you might think that restricting your water um, to not have to cath yourself as often would be beneficial so you're not introducing bacteria with the catheter as often. It's actually the opposite. It's actually counterproductive to do that. Um, it's allowing the bladder to stay, it's allowing the bacteria to stay in your bladder longer so then it'll start to build up, start to spread, and that's when infections happen. So staying hydrated, making sure you have enough water in you is probably the most important bladder management tip I could offer you. Um, I personally self-cath about every two to three hours um, because I try to drink 75 to 100 ounces of water every single day. Most of the time I get that, sometimes I don't, and that's okay. But I shoot for 75 to 100 ounces of water, so that's not including my coffee or anything else that I might drink, um, but water a day. Um, and that's kind of how I, that's what my body likes. Um, everybody will be different. So I know there is a thing out there saying that you should try to drink half your body weight in ounces. I think I said that right. So if you're a 200 pound person, then you try to drink 100 ounces of water a day. Does that make sense? Or 150, um, you would try to drink 75 ounces of water a day. Um, I kind of shoot for a little bit above that standard for myself. But um, yeah, so those were my five tips for bladder health. Keep halting the spread of bacteria, um, proper nutrition, active lifestyle, keeping up your routine um, of bladder management and staying hydrated. And here we go into bladder health. Okay, and so the second part is about the three different types of catheters that I use. I always get these three types in my monthly shipment every month. Um, I use some more than the others, but you'll and you'll find out why um, as the video progresses. Um, but to ensure that I can self-cath myself and prevent incontinence wherever I am, I do have these three different types of catheters. Um, and I will kind of show them to you as we go. But um, my incontinence is the type where if I can go when I need to go, then I don't 
experience it. But if I wait too long or if I'm coming down with a UTI, then it kind of will get worse. So the first type of catheter that I use, that I use probably 95 to 98% of the time is this um, Coloplast Speedy catheter. So it is just that big. I don't know if it's focusing, there we go. Um, it's nice and travel friendly. Um, it just pulls out and then the catheter um, it's a female catheter, so it's about six inches long. Um, this is what I use most of the time. Um, this is what I get the most of in my shipments. Um, and then with this catheter, I do have to transfer onto the toilet, um, you know, pull down my pants, and then this will drain directly into the toilet from this end. If it's going to... Um, so this is what I use 98, 95, 98% of the time. Um, if I can get into a bathroom, but for whatever reason, I don't feel comfortable transferring onto the toilet, whether it's too low, there's no grab bars, there's not enough room to, to position myself in the way that I need to transfer anything like that, then I use just a regular straight catheter. Um, this is technically a male catheter because it's longer. Um, it's just a straight tip. Um, whoops, I just dropped um, the speedy catheter. Let me get, stand by. Okay, so what I didn't mention with this is that it is a hydrophilic catheter so it is a water-based lubricant um, this one is also a water-based lubricant or a hydrophilic catheter um, actually all three of these are a hydrophilic um, there are straight catheters that still have gel lubricant on it um, those work as well um, so yeah if I this drains directly into the toilet as well the long straight catheter um, I can do it to where I don't have to pull down my pants to do this um, but I can also calf myself in really weird positions that a lot of people seem to um, struggle with so um, to start you can always just pull down your pants and go. Um, I do put my legs on the outside of my chair frame to help with that as well. Um, so then the third type of catheter that I have um, is called a closed system catheter. Um, it comes in a little pouch like this. Um, this is a Hollister. It's called the only. Um, this is also Hollister and it's the Vapro Plus Pocket. I don't know if I can get it to, there you go. Um, there is a picture on the back. Um, so this is what it looks like where this is the catheter and then this is the collection bag and this is also a hydrophilic. Um, there is a protective sleeve around the catheter part and then a rubber tip at the top. Um, this is actually the Whoa, focus, focus. There we go. Um, this is actually the first catheter that I used, the only closed system catheter that I have ever used that is honestly and literally, like legitly a no touch system. So I do not touch the catheter at all. Um, in this I do. This I do not, but it's a lot shorter. Um, so this is also a male version, um, just meaning that it's a longer catheter. Um, this is my lifesaver. This is a, if I have to go and I'm not near a bathroom, I can't fit into a bathroom, or I just, I can't get in for whatever reason. Um, it is not uncommon for me to pee in the car. 
um, I just get so caught up in my day and I'm usually running late, which I am working on, but um, I'll leave, forget to go, or be out doing things for such a long time that I need to go um, in between stops. Um, or when I was driving um, an hour to and from work every day, I was pretty much going at least once or twice a day in the car. These were lifesavers. So um, all of my outdoor recreational stuff, um, I make sure I always have these as well as, well, all three of these actually, but these especially, um, that way I know no matter what, I can go to the bathroom. Um, it takes a lot of anxiety out of my daily life for me. Um, and I know with these three different catheters, no matter what, I'm covered. Um, now, when I do use these um, not in a bathroom, I kind of have no shame in my game. I will go whenever, wherever. Um, I'll try to do it as... <laughs> Um, nonchalantly as I can um, cover up what I can but you don't see anything when I go so I have no problem going anywhere I guess is what I'm trying to say and I pretty much have gone I think pretty much everywhere um, but yeah so those are the three different catheters that I use the Coloplast Speedy Cath Compact the Hollister only and the Hollister Vapro Pocket. Vapro, Vapro Plus Pocket. Um, yeah, those are the three that I use. I always make sure that I have all three of those with me. And then I know no matter what, I am covered for my bathroom and bladder needs. Thank you so much for watching this. Do me a favor and smash the like and the subscribe button if you like this video or found any value to it. Also comment something below with what stood out or something that you would like to see in the future. I would love to hear from you and what I can do to help. Let's keep those happy thoughts, productivity, and self-care going. And until next time, live honestly, passionately, and with kindness.